Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, and I've got my super inexpensive Plex server out here, the little GMK Tech mini PC. And this one dual boots between Windows and Linux, and today it's back in Windows once again because they've recently made some changes to the Windows version of the media server to allow you to do hardware tone mapping of HDR video. You could not do that before on Windows, but you could do it on Linux. And in the Linux overview we did a few weeks ago, this little GMK Tech mini PC did a great job with hardware transcoding of those big 4K files. And now that this Windows feature is enabled, we'll take a look and see how well it runs on the Windows side. There are some differences in how you configure it, but we should be able to get a good idea as to whether or not the little PC here can handle the job. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and take a look at hardware transcoding tone mapping on the little mini PC here in Windows. Now, this mini PC is running with an Intel N150 processor, which is in the Alder Lake family of chips. In order for hardware tone mapping to work on Windows, you need a minimum of a Tiger Lake processor or newer. And those are the ones that can support tone mapping on the Windows side. On Linux, the requirement's a little less restrictive in that older KB Lake processors dating back to 2016 are able to handle tone mapping in hardware. So if you have one of those older computers, Linux is still the only way to go. But on newer chips, Tiger Lake and later, you're now able to do that on the Windows side. Let me show you how to get things configured and some of the settings differences between Windows and Linux. Now in the video description, I will put a link to this support article about this HDR to SDR tone mapping feature. By the way, this does require a Plex Pass because this does involve the hardware transcoder, which is a Plex Pass feature. And in a nutshell, what HDR to SDR means is that if you are trying to watch a movie on your phone while you're out of the house and you have to compress it down into a smaller bitstream to be able to consume it, you will lose many times the HDR encoding that gives you that brilliant picture on your TV screen. And what Plex will do in the background as it transcodes that video smaller is convert that HDR video to SDR so it looks close to uh, what you would like it to look like on your phone while you're out and about. And again, the support article will give you a lot more information. Now, unlike many features in Plex, this one is very different based on what platform you're running it on. So in the case of the Windows device here, we're gonna go over to the hardware transcoder menu. And what you will see here is that HDR tone mapping will be enabled by default. And what you have underneath it here are a bunch of settings for saturation, for contrast and brightness. And this is because Plex says that you might notice your output being a little darker than you might like. And this is going to vary based on the device that you're looking at, what kind of screen it has. So you might need to go into this setting and tweak things a little bit to get it working to your satisfaction. Note that this is a server level change. So it's going to make this for any other transcoding session that happens. So as such, the Windows transcoder works differently because you do have to set these values uh, manually, essentially, as you're going through getting things going. Now on the Linux side, the options are a little bit different here because they have these pre-baked algorithms that you can choose. And you can select the one that looks best on the devices that you're looking at. You don't have those manual settings on the Linux side. Now, if you're curious as to what these algorithms mean, the support article does have information about that uh, towards the bottom here, about what each of these algorithmic changes will do to the output video. So again, on the Linux side, you have these pre-baked algorithms. On the Win Windows side, you have to set the values manually to get the best picture. I'm gonna leave them as is though, and why don't we take a look at a film here that's in HDR, get it converted down to 720p, and let's see what it does to the processor here. All right, so right now I'm playing the movie in original quality here on my Mac, and I think my browser and Mac are doing the SDR conversion here in hardware. But what I'm gonna do now is convert to 720p HD high, and that will force the transcoder to have to do some work here. So we're gonna have a brief pause. 
I'm going to switch over to my control panel here so we can see what's happening on the server side. Now I'm watching the video buffer back up on the Mac and you will notice here that we've got those HWs in parentheses next to the video section here so it looks like we are successfully transcoding everything in hardware. If I scroll down uh, what we will see here is the CPU usage and once everything settles down you can see where uh, the usage is coming in at. So we're at about uh, 27 percent here. We'll let this cycle a few more times and see how it does. Uh, we do have some system processes going on in the background. It's Windows after all. Um, but by and large, this is much better than what we saw when we were trying to do this in Windows a few weeks ago before this feature was enabled. So it is doing some hardware transcoding of the video. All is good. And you can also see the memory situation here is largely untouched. I can't show you too much of this movie because it is copyrighted, but I will say that we're a little brighter than I would like. It's actually not darker than, I, than it was initially, which was what Plex was talking about. So this is where we may want to make some adjustments in the control panel to get a little bit more contrast on the image. Now, what we just experienced here was hardware transcoding in Windows using an Intel processor. If you have an Intel or AMD computer running Windows with an NVIDIA GPU, then you will get the same hardware transcoder that you have for Linux, at least when it comes to tone mapping. So if you have the NVIDIA GPU installed, you will have those algorithms that you can choose from that might deliver better results. It's only if you have the Intel transcoder running that you have to set all of those values for contrast and saturation and brightness manually. Now, if you decide not to do hardware tone mapping and just do it on the software side, then you can do it on Windows, again, with the algorithms, with an Intel chip, and without having to need an NVIDIA GPU. But of course, that is much more expensive from a hardware standpoint. Certainly, higher-powered Intel processors can handle this without too many issues. But if you want the hardware acceleration here, these are the limitations you'll be working with when you've got Intel hardware running on Windows. But as we saw a few weeks ago, uh, we can get the full uh, transcoder running with Intel hardware if we choose the Linux option for our Plex server. So after playing around with this, I think if you are intending to do a lot of hardware tone mapping of 4K video, you'll probably want to pair up your cheap mini PC with a Linux version of the Plex media server, just because I think the results are a little bit better and require less tweaking. But again, on Windows now, you can do HDR tone mapping in hardware with some tweaks to get it looking the way you want. Now, if you are not doing any tone mapping, in other words, just streaming media in your home at the full bit rate, then you don't have to worry about this. The Windows version of the server will deliver that video just fine to an NVIDIA Shield, for example, somewhere else in your home. Where this really comes into play here is when you're running things out of the home and transcoding that video down into a smaller bit rate where that tone mapping will need to take place. And as you saw in the prior video with the Linux server running on this hardware, it can handle it uh, with ease and it looks pretty good too. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching and I want to thank Plex for their ongoing support of the channel.